right, good afternoon. So pie hats are coming in. Daryl did a phenomenal job getting these things ordered, uh, getting everybody's uh, pre-orders set up and getting all these things shipped out to everybody. So hats off to Daryl on that one. So, yeah, I'm assuming most people got their pie hats. Uh, if you haven't gotten it, I'm sure you will soon. Uh, and they're starting to come in, so there's bound to be some questions on how to actually control pixels with them. Uh, I know I've done it in a couple other videos before, and Daryl has too, but I'm going to try to make this one as short as humanly possible. Uh, just short and straight to the point. So here's your pie hat. Came in today. You got it. You got it in the mail, uh, or whenever you got it. Um, and it should look just like this, depending on what version you got, whether you got the one with all the bells and whistles, the, the, the clock on board and the buck converter to be able to run 12 volt pixels and also power the pie with five volts. Um, now it's pretty simple here. You just put your power into it. There's your fuse. Whatever, whatever voltage you put in here is what's going to come across your pixels right here. So if you're putting five volts in here, you're going to be rolling in five volt pixels. You put 12 volts in here, you're going to be running 12 volt pixels. Now to power the actual pie, up top. Now this is going to be contingent on what version you use. Uh, if you were got the deluxe model or just the bare bones one. Uh, so if you got the bare bones one, there won't be a buck converter up here. So you're not going to be able to power the pie uh, off of the 12 volts. You know, with the 12 volt buck converter, because there's no buck converter on board. Uh, but if you're running 5 volts, you can even see the trace on the board right here. It goes right up and it powers the, the pins on the pie. So it would be able to power your pie if you're running 5 volts. Now, if you're running 12 volts, you definitely need the buck converter, or you need to power the pie separately with another cable, because you're putting 12 volts in here. So if you put 12 volts in, it goes through the fuse, runs your 12 volts here, goes through this jumper on the left side. Uh, let's see if I can move it to see where it says 12 volt. See, right there, maybe. I don't know. 12 volt, whatever. Now I've done messed up my whole setting. Woo! Let me get this back straight so we can get a look at it. There we go. Good enough. So, if you're running 12 volts, it goes 12 volts here. It goes into the bottom of the buck converter on this side, and then it jumps over, and there's another trace coming out of the buck converter that goes up and gives 5 volts to the pie. Okay, so that's how the, the operation runs. Now, regardless of which one you put in here, 12 or 5, if you got the clock, it's going to either spit back out 5 volts over here to run the IC chip to run the clock, or it's going to get 5 volts from your main power input right here. So either way, it's going to be 5 uh, on uh, right here for this. And that's going to power your clock. Uh, and then, of course, the battery powers it in low power mode to keep the time and the date. But anyway, so that's pretty straightforward, and you know how to hook up pixels already. Positive data and ground, pretty simple, just the same as it is on all controllers. So first thing you do, plug this thing up to your Pi, right? Get it all hooked up, stick it down, stick the 21-pin GPIO header on top of the GPIO header, and you're all set. Uh, somebody just posted on the forum, so I may be making this video for no apparent reason. Let's go look and see, shall we? Uh, somebody may have already put up description on how to do this. Let's look. Do, do, do. Uh, other group buys. Travis. That's what I was looking for. I'll take it one set for GPIO 18. That's something. Did anyone find limits on each GPIO pin? Just curious on the note. I'm sure I won't run more than a universe off of each output. Okay, cool. Alright, so anyway, you plug it up to your Pi. Your Pi is all set. Uh, and you get it all powered up. Then the next thing you're going to need to do is log into your Pi. Hopefully you're on the latest version of the FPP, and you log into it just like you normally would, regardless uh, whether you're logging into it via uh, hardwired Cat5 or you're logging into it uh, over the Wi-Fi. Either way. So I happen to be logged into mine over the Wi-Fi. And mine's actually set up in the back of my computer case. I've got a Pi and a Pi hat controlling the lighting inside my computer case. But... Anyway, so this one's set up in standalone operation, uh, and while I've, all I've got to do to set up the pie hat on top of it is go out here to input output setup, channel outputs, go to other. You don't have to set up anything on any of the tabs. Just go to other, and you can see mine's already set up here, RPI WS 281X. Uh, so to, in order for you to do it for the first time, you're going to have to hit add, and then there'll be a drop down. You go down the drop down, pick your RPI WS281X, and then you, it's as simple as entering how many channels you got, starting channel number, and how many pixels total. And then you can pick your RGB or GBR order or whatever. Uh, so GPIO 18 is going to be the first pin. So 18 is going to be loop, that one right there. And 19 is going to be that one right there. So for me, I've only got one hooked up on that actual setup right now. So I've got it on GPIO uh, string number one. See, I've got 50 pixels hooked up onto it. So 150 pi uh, 
150 channels, and the starting channel is number one. The starting channel could be whatever you costly want it to be. It can be, you know, in the, it could be 10,587. It doesn't matter. We're just absolute channel value. So if you're creating a sequence in X lots and you're trying to create that model, whatever that model's number is, that model's channel number is what needs to be the starting channel number here for the actual pi hat. So that's it. Uh, now the first time you do this, you'll see when you when you add yours for the first time, it didn't do it for me because I already had it, but when you add it for the first time, you're going to get this pop-up. Uh, enabling the RPI WS28X output may require an automatic reboot when the config is saved. So yeah, you will have to reboot it when you save it. Um, so for me, I, I don't really want to save it, and I don't even want that second uh, output there, so we're going to delete that one. I only need the first one. It only does two anyway. So number one and number two. Then to test it, you, once it's rebooted, you could go right over here to the actual uh, display testing tab. Click on enable test mode, channel range, just select all of them. Uh, and then start playing around with colors here. Click on fill and start moving your colors around. You can't see it. I, I wish I had two, co two cameras set up. But my computer is changing colors right now. It's, so it'll run through there and do all the different colors that you change it to. So, and you can do chase patterns and everything else. So that means you have everything hooked up correctly. If that, or if you're that far along, you've got it all hooked up correctly. Then you can load up a sequence to it or do whatever you want to. Use it in bridge mode. Use it as a, a remote pie and actually control a model. Um, use it as standalone like I am here to run like a, a, a background sequence that just runs over and over again for a Christmas tree. Uh, that's what I've got going on here. It's just PC case playlist that's just breathing green on, up and down. I think I've got a video on my YouTube channel if you want to see that. But... So that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to turn off that display testing. That way it goes right back to my default breathing green for my computer. And that's it. That's how you output to the Pi Hat. All right. Hope everybody has a great day. See you.